check out this pig toy. Makes a sound. I have to plug it. Well, now I'll try later. That was the pig, not me. Well, the pig was oinking real good off camera, but as soon as I turn the camera on, doesn't want to cooperate. One more time. Some dude over there won't get out until I leave. Well, he got out of his truck a couple times. I don't know to make a show, but I've seen him before. He's not—he's not getting out until I leave. But I just decided to stay extra long. I like to ruin people's schedules. Plus, I'm busy trying to throw the pig in the pool. I just made it. You know what's really rewarding is when I get here and I see somebody that is waiting for me to leave so they can have it to theirself. So I just sit here and wait them out. <laughs> then they get frustrated and close the door hard and almost peel out and drive off and give me a hard look. That is very satisfying. It's just one of those things I'll never understand. People bring their dog to a dog park, but they don't want anyone else there. I'm sure there are plenty other fenced in options other than a dog park if you don't want to see any other dogs or other people. Well, I guess I made him suffer long enough. The sun's starting to hit the treetops. I gotta get breakfast and watch some YouTube get off to work. That's right, no TV. I'm almost done with TV except for Survivor. It's the only thing I watch. So I'm almost to the point of throwing the TV out. It's moving that way anyway. Everybody's cutting the cord and watching the internet. I think people have made a decision without knowing that they've made a decision about TV they want real content and maybe they're sensing that what they're getting on TV is not real I'm talking about the news and the sitcoms too there's so much more entertaining stuff in real life dude just got out of his truck again getting antsy
pacing back and forth around his tailgate looking over here <laughs> I think I'll stick it out for five more minutes something wrong with me now the challenge will be leaving that pig here and getting Lee on a leash I think I'll drive by. You know what? It just occurred to me. He might be one of those perverts looking hook up in the park. I really don't like it when people try to get me to do something from body gestures by staring or pacing or trying to make it uncomfortable. I flip it on them. I make them uncomfortable. If you have something to say to me, you come up and say it. But I'm not going to respond to that bullshit. Bring it. I love you, bitch. Quote from a cop's TV show. I promise you, I haven't been taking drugs. But some past situations came to mind after thinking about that dude in the park. And a lot of the dudes in the park. When I was younger and good looking, I got hit on a lot by gay dudes. And one of them tried to put their, his hands on me. Yeah. I'm gonna lose a lot of you. <laughs> I actually worked with a dude, carpet cleaning. He was driving, he reached over and pinched my nipple. <laughs> And it surprised me what I did. I instantly grabbed his throat and I don't know where that came from. And he looked like he saw a ghost and it was awkwardly silent after that. He didn't fire me, but I kind of, you know, I wanted less hours and I eventually quit because I knew what I was dealing with. My boss was a pervert. But then I was impressed with myself for doing that. It's like instantly something went off in me and I just went over and you know, I didn't even, no words were said. His eyes got big looking at me, looking at the road and then that was it. And you know, it's not gonna happen. Another time, I think, well I was really young, 16. I was uh, you know, driving no shirt on, going down the interstate, really junky truck, crunched up, uh, no windows, worse than this one, a lot worse. This man drives by, and then I was confused, you know, 16, you don't know what's going on. He drove by, then I looked, he had some bills, he was holding up some bills. I was going, wow, he's flashing money, I said, so what? Big deal, trying to act like a big shot. And then the second time he came back around, he stopped on the shoulder and got on the side of me again and showed the money. And I said, oh, that pervert. And he did it three times. And the third time I wouldn't even look at him. You know, I was starting to get it, you know. I said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Welcome to the real world. You know, I have a great sister. She's about 10 years older. And she sensed the situation I'm in, which is a serious financial hole, a nightmare. And she cooked up some lunches and packed them and Tupperware and stuff. I was very happy for that. Cause I mean, it doesn't matter where you live. You should know that food and groceries aren't cheap and it does cut into your budget lots of random stuff on this video when I'm working and a woman comes out and says you don't have to trim and she lets her dog out and wants you to leave so you can be done with it you'd be better off talking her into letting you trim 
Because what happens is the husband comes home and says, why didn't he edge? Why didn't he trim? And she'll say, I don't know. And she'll deny it. It happens.